Hey everyone, my name is Spaz and I'm a CD junkie. On this episode of CD Junkie, I am going to discuss the music of Ian McNabb and his band The Icicle Works. And usually if you've seen any of these videos, I like to start off and tell you a brief little story about how I got into the band. And it, it, So let's turn the clocks back to 1983. Uh, I was still working at a place called Jack in the Box, which is a fast food restaurant in California and probably uh, nationwide, at least at one point. And um, one of my coworkers came over. He parks across the street, I'm standing out there talking with him, and he's leaning against his car. The engine is off, car radio's on, and we're talking, and probably talking about something important, I don't know, uh, or, or just talking about something frivolous. But all of a sudden, I start hearing this song that's on the radio that I'd never heard before. Uh, uh, I have terrible hearing, but my hearing can pick out a good melody. And uh, car radio's kind of low, and it's like I'm listening, and I'm trying to figure out what song it is. And... and it, it, it's totally intriguing me. The first thing I'm thinking in my head, while this guy's still talking, by the way, first thing I'm thinking is, gosh, it sort of, sort of reminds me of, it could be like a Colin Moulding, like an XTC Colin Moulding song, because it was very rhythmic, uh, like the stuff off of the uh, English Settlement album that XTC had put out the previous year. So I'm listening, and not to him, to the music. And then as soon as he's done talking, I'm going, can you turn up the radio? Because I'm going to hear... Uh, when they back announce and uh, I discovered the song was birds fly whisper to a scream by the icicle works now Actually, they may have said whisper to a scream uh, Birds fly because that's the American title But the uh, UK title and probably everywhere else in the world. It's known as birds fly whisper to a scream So of course from that moment on 36 years ago I became an instant fan and I'm still a fan to this very day uh, so let's go through their catalog here, their CD catalog, because I'm a CD junkie. This is the debut album, The Icicle Works. This is the album with like uh, Love is a Wonderful Color, Out of Season, Factory in the Desert, um, Lover's Day, and of course, Birds Fly. And uh, this version actually you know, is a little mini version because it comes in the box set, limited edition box set with three CDs and booklet and all that kind of stuff. I think that's out of print, but you can still probably track down a copy of uh, the first album there. Again, the Icicle Works. Icicle Works were from Liverpool, and they're very post-punk. Uh, but you really, because like Love is a Wonderful Color was just this great, huge pop song. Uh, Birds Fly was this huge pop song. Uh, out of Season was this very lovely song. Uh, but then you get other things like Factory in the Desert or Nirvana, uh, these things, um, Chop the Tree, where they, it's very post-punk, um, but not easy to compare with anybody else. But they had a very unique sound, uh, and you couldn't really tell the influences at that point. It wasn't until later that the Beatles and Neil Young and all these people started coming out a little bit. But it's a very unique record, and thing that you're going to notice is like a lot of other great bands is they never stand in place for too long case in point their second album the small price of a bicycle that came out in 1985 uh hollow horse is a, another great song of uh, all the daughters of her father's house seven horses rapids perambulator um in fact this three cd version here which has the full album plus the singles the singles edits uh, non album tracks, sessions, whatever, extended mixes. Uh, this has a, a song, a uh, non album single called When It All Comes Down, which is one of their best. And it's a shame it never made an album because it's fab and gear. This album here was different than the first album. Still, you can tell it was the same band, but they were doing different things. There were some songs that were really poppy, some songs that were, were you know, stuck in the post-punk other songs were sort of introducing that sort of american neil young uh late 60s rock uh california rock sound to it but it was it was a really varied album and um lots of great songs on there once again that's the three cd version then the next album came out in 1987 and that was called if you want to defeat your enemy sing his song and this is another stylistic change this is Probably the most poppy or most popish, the most straightforward, the most instant that Icicle Works were for the commercial rock fan. I think it probably had to do a lot with Ian Brody producing it. Uh, but there's just great songs like 
uh, When You Were Mine, uh, Sweet Thursday, uh, uh, Hope Springs Eternal, up here in the north of England, or the straightforward punk rock of Understanding Jane, one of the best straightforward, edgy, punkish tracks that uh, McNabb has ever released. It still remains a favorite, and it got played on K-Rock a lot. Again, three CD version with sessions and extended mixes and edits and all that stuff. Then came Blind, which was uh, came out in 1988. And again, it still has the commercial edge of uh, If You Want to Defeat Your Enemy, but it goes off in so many different directions. Uh, you've got... Um, the, the gospel feel of the song Blind. You've got sort of the funk print sound of the Kiss Off. Shit Creek is like Zeppelin riffing. Uh, then you get Starry Blue Eyed Wonder and Stood Before St. Peter and High Time and a lot of great songs. And of course, this is the three CD version with loads of bonus tracks. They were releasing EPs around this time. Right? And uh, in fact, through their entire career, they've always had singles and EPs with great non album B sides. So that's why these three CD versions are so essential to your collection. Uh, but Blind, now this was the original trio of, after this album, the band split. But Ian McNabb signed a deal with Sony and put out Permanent Damage with a new version of Icicle Works, a new trio. This album, in my opinion, is the start of his solo career. This is the two CD extended version. This has some of, like, uh, Melanie Still Hurts is one of his best tracks ever. Uh, but I Still Want You, Baby Don't Burn. Dumb Angel is very Beach Boys-esque. This is a straightforward rock album, uh, or pop rock, guitar rock, indie rock, whatever you want to call it. It really showed the direction that McNabb was going to go, because you can tell, you know, the Neil Young's uh, influence and the Beatles' influence and the Beach Boys' influence, obviously, on Permanent Damage. Uh, and, of course, you know, I mean, I, I keep mentioning the Beatles. You know, it's not, yeah, 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 hand clap Beatles. Uh, it's you know the 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 deeper type of songwriting probably closer to lennon uh than he is to mccartney but uh after this the band split up and then ian McNabb released his first solo album truth and beauty and that's the album right there uh this album had uh i go my own way uh these are the days great dreams of heaven uh if love was like guitars and this version, of course, is the two CD version with loads of bonus tracks, if you can see that. And this was definitely, uh, it came out in 93, very much like the uh, uh, the stuff that was going on there. A touch of psychedelic, there's a little bit of the Manchester rhythm uh, in a couple tracks. But generally speaking, it was a, a really varied album, you know, him sort of touching on a whole bunch of different things, which is a great thing, because Ian McNabb not only changed... With every album, he changed within the albums. Uh, and um, and that's what makes him an artist that you always need to hear because you never know what he's going to do next. In fact, with the next record, 94's Head Like a Rock, this album features Neil Young's Crazy Horse on some of the tracks. And it rocks like you would expect. You Must Be Prepared to Dream is killer. Uh, this Time Forever is amazing. Fire Inside My Soul. This is a killer album from start to finish and this here is the cherry red two cd version with bonus material this was absolutely fantastic album head like a rock ian mcnab then came mercy beast which some consider and i think ian might uh one of his best albums if not his best album this album carries on the, the rock tradition of head like a rock uh it has crazy horse on it uh but there's just some some of his best songs on here, like uh, Camaraderie, You Stone My Soul, Love, Love's Young Dream, and the title track, Mercy Beast. He's, he's a proud Liverpudlian, and uh, Liverpool should be proud of him. Then in 1998 comes a party political broadcast on behalf of the emotional party. This was almost an anti Head Like a Rock album. He, he, he stripped away the rock, and it's more of a mellow, acoustic-based album. But uh, great songs on this, like The Man Who Can Make a Woman Laugh, uh, Sex With Someone You Love, uh, You Only Get What You Deserve. And there's an acoustic version of a song called Liverpool Girl, which is fantastic. Definitely check that out. All you pop fanatics, and, and, and even people who like power pop, should check out the self-titled album that came out in 2001. 
They might call this album like the Batman album because it's him wearing his Batman costume when he was a kid. That's actually a picture of uh, Ian there. And this album is just full of absolute pop treats. Uh, Living Proof, uh, Miracles Can Happen is, is stellar. If We Believe What Love Can Do, All Right With Me, uh, Nothing Less Than The Very Best, and a rock version of Liverpool Girl. Remember the last album, this one here had the acoustic version. This one has a full band rock. And like I said, this is one that would appeal to power pop fans and people who just love glorious melodic rock. Uh, next up in my collection here, uh, this, this was not an actual studio album. This is called Waifs and Strays. And it's like a collection of demos, unreleased tracks, uh, something to sort of fill in the gaps. Uh, he probably sold that uh, on his website or, or uh, on tour. And then came along The Gentleman Adventurer, which is another collection of great melodic songs. Whereas the previous self-titled album, the Batman album, was just real punchy and power pop-ish. This is more mellow. And there's a song in this album that's called The Human Heart and How It Works. And it sounds like if John Lennon had written the Stone song Fool to Cry. Uh, it's just absolutely stellar. But there's other great songs on here like um, Ain't No Way to Behave, An Honest Mistake, Lady by Degrees. It's not fully acoustic, uh, but it's a lot mellower than the previous album, and it's friggin' fantastic. Next up was a compilation called Boots, which I don't own. Uh, Boots was a two-CD collection of unreleased tracks, demos, um, and alternate versions and stuff. So one of these days I will get it. But if you go to Ian's, I think his Bandcamp page, you'll be able to download it. Um, in fact, a lot of the stuff I'm talking about here, if you can't find it physically, you can download it straight from Ian's Bandcamp page. But let's get into his next album, which is called Before All of This. And trust me, that sticker, I'll hold up there a second, doesn't lie. The first half of it is kind of mellow acoustic, and the second half rocks uh but there's great songs in here the uh there ought to be a law finally getting over you the lonely ones let the young girl do what she wants to picture of the moon keeping your love alive and then there's a more rock version of the lonely ones so there's two versions of that on the album but that was a great album that came out in 2005 also that same year came people don't stop believing which was sort of a companion disc to uh, before all of this and this was another collection of demos rarities alternate versions and the like and that's another worthwhile addition to your ian mcnab catalog then 2009 brought us great things the first three tracks shows ian almost in a trip hop mood with these elect electronic rhythms there's a track on here um that's called uh all About a Woman, which is very experimental. The rest of the album is pretty much back to normal uh, guitar-oriented stuff. Uh, but the first three tracks, like I said, are very trip-hoppy and really fun to listen to because he's always changing. You just never know what he's going to put out. And it was great that he tried those. I mean, Great Things is a great song. New Light, uh, This Love, and Storm Chaser are also great songs on that. Uh, then, of course, comes Ian McNabb and his uh, Left Turns Again, Little Episodes. Another, another fine album here that features uh, Ancient Energy, uh, Only Children, uh, and A Heart That You Can Borrow. Both of those are very Crosby, Seals, Nash, Young Harmonies. Uh, he Wrote Himself a Letter is a great song. King of Hearts is a great song. This sounds like it's probably more, you know, CSN or CSNY than anything else. Lots of great harmonies on this album mellower or or shall i say uh more acoustic based than it is rock but he was going to turn that around with his next album which is called eclectic warrior and sorry about the autograph uh hope it doesn't obscure the cover too much eclectic warrior was a rocking album uh very very straightforward you know closer you know head like a rock uh this has got like no hero to me um my life to live again uh they couldn't hear the music Oh, Memory Be Good to Me. Stellar album from beginning to end. Another triumph for Mr. Ian McNabb. Then he continues that trend, but instead of putting out, you know, a load of new tracks, he, he puts a rock and spin on some of his older, lesser-known tracks. 
and that's the Kruger Rands album. I mean, he doesn't revisit like his most famous songs, but he, uh, well, well, there's a new song on here called Gravy, but uh, like Hurricane Elaine, Ain't No Way to Behave, Ride of the Heartless Mare, uh, those are, in fact, all these tracks here are just deep album tracks that he felt he never got right the first time, so he went back in and recorded them with a lot of energy. There's even a version of the Sly Fox song, Let's Go All The Way, which is pretty great. So that's uh, Ian McNabb, Krugerrands. Then in 2016, he released Respectfully Yours, which is an album of cover versions. And instead of rocking out, he, it, it's very introspective, uh, heartfelt, and he gives his own McNabbian twist on things. Like Run To Me is the Bee Gees song, Killing Moon is the Echo and the Bunnyman song, Memory Motel is the Stone song, Crystal Ship is the Doors, uh, Life on Mars is Bowie, Changes is the Sabbath song, uh, Pocahontas uh, by Neil Young and others there. Nice collection of cover versions on the mellow side and absolutely wonderful. Then in 2017 came Star Smile Strong, which is just heaven on a stick, heaven on a disc. That has uh, Mystic Age, which is very Pink Floyd. It's, uh, it's the opening track in the album. Uh, uh, how She Moves, uh, Clara Bella, Come to the Window, which is like 12 minutes long and seems a third of that length. Uh, this Love I Feel for You, uh, Women Love a Bastard, Men Love a Bitch. Uh, lots of great songs in here. I think that Ian might have said somewhere that this was the best album he put out since Mercy Beast. But let me tell you, every album is just jam-packed full of yumminess. And then we're going to end here with Our Future in Space, which is his 2018 album. And this is absolutely stellar. Uh, I think I might even like this better than Star Spall Strong, to be honest. But uh, Making Silver Sing is wonderful. Um, uh, Medicated Emma, Throw the Rest Away, My Accuser, uh, the title track, Our Future in Space, A Secret Everybody Knows, a lot of great songs on this album. And that's it with Ian McNabb and Icicle Works. But uh, two, two titles I wanted to throw by you real fast because I discussed the um, studio things. He did put out a live album. It's called Live at Life. There's been a couple compilations. There's been a couple Icicle Works compilations, I believe. And then there's uh, Potency, the best of Ian McNabb, which brings his uh, probably his first seven or eight solo albums together. This version here has a bonus disc, which contains rarities. Well, that's it with my stroll through Ian McNabb's catalog. Uh, I hope that maybe this inspires you to go investigate maybe uh, definitely his solo career because he's one of the few artists that I can say 36 years on, he's just as relevant, just as great, if not better than he was back when Icicle Works first started. He's still an amazing songwriter. If you like Neil Young and the Lennon side of the Beatles and just classic 60s you know the the who and the kinks and all these influence all come together to form a sound that i refer to as mcnabbian and uh but definitely check out his catalog go to his Bandcamp page go to youtube and listen to some tracks by ian and uh, icicle works so i guess that's it thank you for hanging out with me for a little while my name is spaz and i'm a cd junkie